48 hours. So uh, tomorrow I'm working a half day, driving to Glendale for the Saints Cardinals game, baby. Got good oh, seats. Nice. So nice. excited. Yeah, that'll be dope. Um, and then I fly out. I get driven right to the airport from the game, and I'm flying overnight to Michigan for a wedding Friday. <laughs> so I'm going to be trashed, so tired. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, Why do you do that to yourself? <laughs> so this is what happened. Um, when the tickets came out, like the day, the, no, the day the schedules came out back in whenever that was, like June, I don't know. I saw like Saints Thursday night at – you know, the Cardinals. And I was like, hell yeah. I just bought the tickets immediately. And then realized like, fuck, I have a wedding the next day. I'm not going to be able to go. And then I was sitting there and I was like, fuck it. I'll just buy my plane ticket for that night and just fly out right after the game. I'm not missing this game. So I, That's just, hilarious. yeah. So yeah, Friday, the wedding will be interesting and I'm in the wedding. So that'll be very interesting. You're in the wedding. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm the driver. So I'm going to be driving the bride to the, to the church. So, okay. Well, I thought you were like standing up and everything. I was like, okay. no, I think I have to read a Bible verse at some point too, but that should be like 30 seconds. So we should be okay. I'll just right. sit miserably in the, in the pews during the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for the reception for the turn up to be. Right. I'm thinking I got to just keep drinking just so like it, it doesn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Get some drinks on the flight. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. <sighs> and then I fly back Saturday night. So it's going to be like a crazy crazy couple of days but it'll be fun so wow yeah, yeah. well what's going on with you good luck man bro that shit just work Working. bro work but i am ready for the week after thanksgiving to get here so i can go to puerto rico nice nice and just get away i need a vacation so fucking bad yeah man you're always going abroad that's sweet i like that i try to like i said my goal is at least once a year to go out of the country. So it's about that time. Is it always somewhere new too? You try to go? Yeah, I try to go to somewhere new every time. Um, so yeah, I've been Mexico, been to Mexico, Jamaica, mm -hmm. uh, Panama. Um, so this will be my first time to uh, Puerto Rico and I've also been to Mali. Gotcha. You uh, Is Europe on your list? Trying to get out to Europe? Yeah, I do eventually want to get to Europe, uh, but I have a personal commitment that I would not go to anywhere in Europe before I go to Africa first. Okay. Cool. That'd be sweet. I want to go to Africa really bad too, man. Go to like on safari and shit like that. That'd be so cool. Yeah. South Africa, something like that. Yeah, yeah. there was a, uh, my friend sent me to some, it was like pretty dope. It was over in Kenya, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, where like they have these really dope tree huts. Like they're up so high that like there's a, video like this girl she was waking up from her waking up and going out on the uh, deck of the uh, hut and like was just feeding giraffes that's so cool i love that so. that would be Pretty so cool. dope every time i've looked at flights to africa they look really expensive though i don't know if that's the case right now but i mean flights in general right now yeah. are just fucking expensive <laughs> that's true that's true Man. yeah yeah, I got to get out there, too. I want to go to... It's weird that Egypt is part of Africa, but I want to go to Egypt, too. But I hear it's pretty dangerous out there right now, so it's kind of hard to do. I was just talking to a lady that went, and she was like, yeah, if you're not on excursions, you don't be walking around at night out there. It's, it's not the safest place, but, yeah, so much history mm -hmm. out there. Most places typically probably aren't the safest at night anyway, so... Yeah, right, right. Yeah, but... Yeah, man. But world travelers man you got to do it knocks it off the exactly. list one year at a time i like it bro it's just crazy how you did it brought in your it literally just broadens your thought process on the world especially america and i think people because people are you know that are born here are just so you know gun ho on this is america free all that shit you know that we're kind of fed which obviously we're lucky to be here for a lot of things for but sure. it's, it's true to kind of to go to different places and see like what it the way of life is like there and how like it might be better in certain aspects is really cool mm -hmm. like you said eye-opening kind of broaden your horizons a little bit yeah it does it's, it, i love it um each time just going and experiencing those different cultures the food is just yeah. i can't wait to go to puerto rico and try the food um i get oh i'm gonna go on the bacardi rum you know, Bacardi is mm -hmm. made out of Puerto Rico, so I'm going to go to a rum tasting. That's really cool. To the distillery out there, so I'm excited to do that. That's really cool. When are you doing that again? November? Uh, the week after Thanksgiving. That's so cool. Nice. So, I it's so it, nice man. weather then. But it's NBA season. 
Yeah. Is here. Is yeah, here man. I really didn't even realize until my older brother texted me last night. He was like, are you watching the games? I was like, damn, there's two games on tonight. Holy shit, man. Yeah, yeah. Did you watch them? Um, I wa- so I, l- I was at the gym during the Celtics and uh, Sixers game, but I got a chance to catch it on the screen and then catch the, the, catch the like, fourth quarter when I got home. And then I watched the Lakers and Warriors game. It's about halftime. I go to bed, but I woke up. I mean, that Sixers and Celtics game, it was a pretty good game. Celtics look like they'll be pretty solid again. Um, I, I really like the pieces that they've added. With like Malcolm Brogdon, I think was a really good uh, mm-hmm. pickup for them. Even though picking up Blake Griffin, it'd be interesting to see how things work out once they get like Robert Williams back from his uh, from the injury and stuff. But I mean, yeah, well Tatum and Brown like, showed out. Yeah, they did. I mean, and they were efficient, and I think that's the thing that's going to really kind of take their game to the next level where they can consistently just be efficient with their scoring. Mm-hmm. And Tatum had like 13 rebounds too. He did, yeah. I think he had 12. So they both had 35 apiece. I was like, damn. I don't think you can expect that every night from both of them. But like, if they're both scoring around 25 a night, that's like a pretty dangerous duo right there. It is. They're pretty. What good. um did Embiid not play? Embiid played. He had a pretty solid game. Was... I just saw Harden stat line. It was like, damn, bro. I didn't. He was like reversing the clock. I was yeah, not he expecting. He took it that. back. He took it back one time. But Embiid was 26 and 15. Okay. Okay. So solid game. Damn, game. Not bad. Still shot fifty percent from the field. There you go. But yeah, Harden. Harden had a game. He really did. I saw he. Uh, they don't have any. Their bench just didn't, didn't really show up. No man. Yeah, that was um. It was interesting to watch too. Yeah, he he was moving like the old James. So I don't know if like the last couple seasons, if it's been more just like a lack of conditioning or what. But he like looked smoother out there. I was like, okay, he looks like. Bro, I mean, the he, James they said are... that he he literally said that he he lost like. 40 to 50 pounds. Holy shit. Like, who, who was just, who was big? <laughs> he was, man. <laughs> he was treating himself there for a little bit. <laughs> right. I mean, he, was, he just wanted to get out of a certain situation in Houston, and then he did it again in, in uh, yeah. with the Brooklyn. So, but, yeah, they do. I mean, he admittedly said that, like, lost fucking weight. Yeah, he looked good. He really did. Um, so that both those teams will be interesting. What did you think about the second game? Did you watch the Lakers Warriors? I, I mean, I, I did. It, the Lakers are going to be in a world of fucking trouble, bro. Listen, man, I don't think you can judge stuff off a of box score. But again, when my brother texted me, I didn't even realize the game's wrong. So I went to my phone. I'm looking at it, and I'm looking at just the roster, and I'm like, I don't know if there's people injured right now, but the Lakers bench is trash. 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 <laughs> <laughs> like they're not I don't even know if they're a playoff team right now I mean maybe just on Braun AD and Westbrook alone but like that bench is horrible bro it is terrible I mean even they started lineup really isn't that no. good. let's just be honest bro yeah. like they're really they're undersized they don't have any shooting nope. bro they were 10 for 40 from the three-point line yeah, they look, yeah, that was not good, bro. And then Bron even said it during the uh, post game interview. He was like, "We, we don't, we don't have any shooters. We have no one on the team that's a career forty percent or better three point shooter on the team." Yeah, unbelievable. They don't look that good. So, so. but they were stating that I guess what they're going to do. Uh, Woj was uh, announcing like the NBA uh, game day that like they're going to wait about twenty games to see. You know, just to kind of see what what the pieces look like and what pieces they want to keep, and then they're also going to look to see like what teams at that point are going to really look to like start to make some moves, and then they're going to try to go from there. Gotcha. Yeah, that's presently constructed. That's not going to work out. That team is. It's a no for me, dog. It's a huge no. <laughs> and then the the Warriors. I mean, they just. I mean, defensively, they're just they're so sharp defensively. They looked good. I'm excited. Wiseman looked really good in the minutes. He, what he had, eight and seven and seven. Yeah, was he like, coming off injury? Right? Is that why he's not? Yeah, playing he's been coming minutes? off injury. So yeah. you know, I think he he'll be really good, especially just kind of. Um, I think, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if at some point he takes over that starting center posi- center position for Kervon Looney. Um, because um, just in the minutes, you can like see there's a difference, right? In how when he's on the court, especially with the starters, just how it looks, especially from a uh, defensive standpoint. Mm-hmm. And he's just much more active. Um, 
So it'll be interesting to see how that how that plays. But I mean, that team, man, you talk about looking at just the differences in team, like that young, the young talent and how deep that Golden State Warriors like benches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got Poole, you got Moody, Wiseman, Jermichael Green, Kaminga, DiVincenzo. Like they're just so fucking deep. Bro. Yeah, exactly. They, what was the deal? Because I didn't watch the game, but with the Draymond and Poole situation, were they on the court together at the same time? So like, yeah, they're at the okay? court at the same. Yeah, they're on the yeah. court at the same time. Um. Didn't really seem like much. And they talked about this actually during the pregame yesterday and where they were, um, they had the uh, commissioner up there and Shaq, like admittedly said it, he was like, bro, what you saw, what happened with Draymond and Poole, like that's not anything new. That happens with every team, every season. Mm-hmm. It Punches get thrown. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm not, he was like, I'll tell you now, I touched up, I put hands on a couple of people. Mm-hmm during practices or whatever it is. He was like, and that was just, you know, how I thought that's how I knew to get down. Like if I need to get somebody to get in line or do what I need to do, if it got if it came to blows, it came to blows. Right. Yeah. It just happens. He was like, it just got publicized in this situation. He was like, so I'm not gonna sit here and condemn Draymond for it. Um, but it happens. Like in yeah. he was like in, in any locker room and I can tell I can talk to you from like I remember back, even back in high school where like we were about to get busy mm-hmm. a couple of teammates was about to get busy in the locker room they had to like if it, it took about three of the coaches to break up the fight because it, it, things was about to go down right right so as it just happens you know egos get in the way you you not gonna just let somebody talk to you so you just it, it happens so right yeah no that's always been a thing in basketball that's true i mean even if you look at like the last dance and stuff like that. Jordan talks about the fist fights they were getting in. You know, that's always. I'm I mean, sure we yeah. all we saw what he did. He said he 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 gave it to Steve Kerr. Yeah, he hit him. That's crazy, man. Right. So everyone's been a part it of just, it. It is. It yeah. just in those sports, it just, it just happens. But I, I'm gonna stick on what I said. They still gonna have to. They, they gonna still have to throw hands. Yeah. Well, do you think Draymond's gone after this season? Draymond definitely gone, bro. Is Draymond is fucking. Uh, did you hear what he said to Kendrick Perkins? No. He called Kendrick Perkins a cone. Oh my lord! <laughs> Holy shit. Air, like, bro, like you cannot. What are you? Draymond is like <laughs> legit over here, just like fucking up, bro. Like he, there's a point where, and even Charles Barkley mentioned this, like because Draymond is who he is, and he just plays on the edge, and he, he Draymond almost has to play on the edge because of like the type, the type of player that he is. Um, but it's like they feel like it's happening too often where Draymond. When you play on the edge, there's gonna be times when you kind of cross that, you cross over that, right? And it just seems like they, like lately, Draymond is just crossing that too, too often. And I don't know um, if the Warriors are gonna just continue to just put up with it, especially because um, Kenny Smith mentioned around. Oftentimes, when decisions, when you as a player are making decisions, you're making decisions personally that are like thousand dollar decisions. But you don't realize that your actions have billion dollar uh, consequences. That's right. And so I think Draymond is kind of running into that now. What do you think his plan is, though? Because I'm thinking the Lakers, bro. Him and Bron are like buddy buddy now. I think that'll be. They are, but what does that help them with? Nothing. I totally agree. I'm not saying it's good. <laughs> I just. I, I mean, the only thing that aging does, star. <laughs> I, I mean, the, the thing that it does is that one, it's gonna make them better for sure defensively. That they're gonna be a hell of a defensive team. It makes it to where Byron can go back to playing the three, and Draymond can play the, uh, can play that four or five or whatever. So, mm-hmm. like, it makes them a hell of a defensive team. It makes it's just them that they need more shooters on, like that. that right, they just gotta solve more. that shooting situation. Yeah, they they have to solve that shooting situation. So. It frustrates me every year with these teams with Braun. Like that's, I, I, we've definitely talked about that before, but that's like always been the formula to his teams being good. So when I see these teams get constructed and they don't have three point shooters, I'm like, what the fuck are you guys even like? Like, right. what are you doing? But you like, if we as ordinary basketball watchers, right, know that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. What the fuck are they? How doing? does Rob Palinka, the GM for the fucking Lakers? Not know that and exactly. not able to make that happen. 
saying he's got to go? I think at some point he may end up having – he's going to end up having to go. Because he's just – the business – you think about it. Even ever since that fucking AD trade, everything that they've given up, and some of it has been unnecessarily. Mm-hmm. Like, even after they had uh, – they won the championship, they didn't have to go and trade for Russ. They didn't have to make that move. No, no, no. Legit didn't. They had a solid fucking team. I agree. Right. You still had Kuzma. You had Caruso. You had guys that could go out there and go get a and go get a bucket. It could like shoot the ball, and you gave that up. Yeah, and that was the thing too. Is I don't know if the the rationale behind getting Russ was that you know, AD was injured that year after, right? And they had lost the Suns, right? And they went. So I don't know if they thought they were slipping, but I, I totally agree with you. It was like get AD back, get healthy keep those pieces around you that can shoot and, you know, get your own shot. I mean, they blew up a lot of shit to get him, man. Like <laughs> not, not good. I, I don't mm-hmm. think that they may, I agree with you. And he did a really good job the year that they acquired 80 to fill out that roster, like that championship yeah. team. But then it seemed like after that, I agree. Every move since then has been very questionable. I would rather them grab buddy healed, you know, than Russ. But that's know. where the talk, a lot of the talk is about is, you know, you maybe trade Westbrook for getting like Buddy Hill and Miles Turner. Mm-hmm. So one, you get the you get a true five that now get allows AD to slide to that four spot where we know he can go to work. Mm-hmm. Um and then just think about defensively how tough they would be with having two of the top shot blockers in the league. Mm-hmm. Right. But then now you got that you got that bona fide sniper. Like you've got a guy that coming off of dives um or drives yeah. to the basket that can for sure go down go and knock hit a knockdown right run. yeah he can run so many like baseline screens for him come you know i mean yeah for sure bro yeah brown would love him yeah i don't know though but i don't even know if russ's value like I, if i'm the pacers i'm not there's got to be something else involved for me to give up miles turner and buddy healed i mean they probably gonna try to go and see if they can get some cat some draft picks out of it as well i just i don't know if they like just have anything to fucking get. yeah they kind of Detonated their future. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Doesn't look good. Does not look so, good. So yeah, no, it's not. It's not looking good. But I'm, um, I'm just excited for the season to begin, and and just see how all of this folds. So if you, I'm gonna ask you. Let I'm gonna ask you this now. Going into it, who are let's 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 make a note of this. Who who do you have going to the championship? If you're looking at it now, mm. who's your preseason prediction? What the season will start? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say the Bucks, and it's gonna be the Bucks and the Pelicans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking with it, bro. They up on the Nets right now. They're up on the Nets right now by eight. Uh, so I, I'm going to go – I'm going to stick with you there. I think I, I really like the book, especially once they get Middleton back. Um, but you know who I'm going with in the West. I feel like I made this player. The Clippers are just – Oh, yeah. You said that for sure. I mean, are they playing I mean, tonight? I got to watch them. I want to see how far it looks. I think everybody else in the league is playing tonight. Um, no, they're not playing tonight. They're not playing tomorrow. They're playing tomorrow. They play the Lakers tomorrow. That's going to be – you want to see a blowout? <laughs> Seriously, bro. Right. You want to see a team not <laughs> score for five minutes straight? <laughs> you, you want to see a dead body? That's about to win. That's what's, what's, that's, yeah, man. That's what's going to happen. Okay. Now, who's going to be your MVP this year? Luca. How about you? I. Um, I'm going to go with MB. Okay. I like it. He hasn't won one yet, right? He's got a scoring title, or does he not? I'm trying to think. Um, he has scoring title, but not uh, MVP. He came yeah. the last two years. He came in second. I don't think Jokic will ever win another one. To be honest with you, even at, like I mean, if he had can have a season like he did last year with the talent that he had, and they can get like a first round, like a like number one seed, maybe. But yeah, maybe, it'd be, yeah. It'd be. So I don't know if it's just gonna happen. All right, who you got for rookie? That's tough, man. Um, I think I'm gonna go with um 
Because I think the magic will give him a lot of room to work. Uh, is the Duke boy? Ben Carroll? Yeah. Yep. Ben Carroll is nice. How about you? Um, I, I think I may be there with you um, with regards to Ben Carroll. Um, like you said, I think that he just will have the opportunity to uh, to do work. Um, though I do, I'm I'm gonna put a sleeper out there. Actually, no, I'm not gonna go with Ben Carroll. I'm gonna go with Keegan Murray in Sacramento. Okay, for the Kings, yeah. Do do can get buckets. He's nice, but a sleeper is Jaden Ivey for the Pistons. Don't sleep on him. Okay. Who? This is interesting. What about your? What do they call it? Like most improved player? Yeah, the most improved. I. That's tough. Like on the spot. It is now. tough. It is tough. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to think about that too. I don't even know if I have an answer me, for that. Man, who? Who do I think will get most improved? Because I, I always think it's usually like not usually, but my mind goes to someone that's coming off an injury that like, you know, like it's gonna like that's really nice, but you know, and then it's gonna come back yeah. and explode. But I um or it can always be like a young, you know, player that's only two, three. That's years what I'm league. that's yeah. what I'm kind of like thinking on, like who that could potentially be. I I'm gonna go with someone on the Rockets. I'm gonna go with Kevin Porter Jr. Okay. I think he can probably have a breakout year. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say. See, I want to go with um. Who won it last year? Uh, Tyler Hero. Okay. No, no, no. Ja did. Ja won it. Okay. Yeah, Ja won because he went from like 19 to like 27 points a game. Right. God, I want to go with, like, Evan Mobley. I just feel like there's too much talent on that team now that, like, it scares me. I don't but know, dude. He's still going to be fucking nice, though. He bro. is nice. I just, like, I – Go with it. I say go with it. All right, let's go Evan Mobley. If I have a oh. revelation, I'll switch it. But, yeah. I mean, he's got, what? He got 10 now. He's a beast, bro. Always dude is man. nice. All right, and then who you got for coach? Mm, I, you know – Regardless if they make it as far as you think they're going to make it, I think they're going to have a hell of a regular season and make a run. So I'm going to say Ty Lue. That's always a good. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with the Pistons coach. Is it still what's his name? Um, I'm going to go with the Pistons coach, bro. Is it still um, the old Toronto coach? Or do we have a new guy? Dwayne now? Casey. I'm going to go I with Casey. Casey. I think okay. I really think that the Pistons don't have a, an improved season. I think so too. And so I'm going to go with I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Casey. All right. What's your over under on the Pistons? As far as wins or like where they'll see? Yeah, you think like 35 to 40? Can they get there? I, I'm gonna give them I'm gonna shoot around like that 38. So I'll go like 38 and a half. I think they can get there. Right there. Let me ask you, what do you think? I like Christian Wood, but like I think Dallas is like a big question this year because they made such a deep run and obviously moved some parts. I still don't think Christian Wood is enough for them to like Even make it to like the Western Conference Finals, I just don't see that happening. I what, mean, obviously Ruka could go on another run, but I just like so. Uh, what's tough about it is that it's not Christian Wood; it's the rest of the West. They just got better, right? Like like New Orleans with Zion back is better, yeah, right? Really the Clippers good. with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George healthy are better, mm -hmm. right? Right, and then you've got the Constance. Obviously, like the Warriors are going to be the Warriors. The, Warriors the Suns are, are still going to be a top five team in the West. Denver with Jamal yeah. Murray and Michael Porter Jr., they're better, yeah. right? So it's not necessarily that it's really the matter yeah. or just the fact that just these other teams have really – they just got players back that we know compared to Christian Wood are just better. So we'll see. I mean, it's, I think a lot of it could potentially – and I think that's a sleeper for, like, Coach of the Year with Jason Kidd is, like, what he can do with uh, – 
with Dallas and um and you know and getting them ready. So we'll see. Out of these young guys that are kind of like taking the torch, like obviously LeBron's got a couple years left. KD obviously is like, you know, his prime's winding down. He's not like old, but like, you know, this like generation of the 2010s, I guess, that were like legends that, you know, um, carried kind of the torch for like the NBA popularity. So now we got this new wave, right? The Jaws, the Lucas, Devin Booker, Zion. When you look at like this pool of guys right now, like who do you think has the best opportunity just based on like their skill to become the next, I don't want to say like greatest, like ever, like in the top 10, but just like, you know, one of those guys that's going to win multiple championships and be like a legend. Like, is there any of them that you think? Well, I think this is somebody that's kind of already, like already kind of doing that with Giannis. Right. I agree. Right. And we forget that Giannis is still in it. We do. Yeah. Right. So Giannis is already kind of like in that mode of that. Um, But I think if you're going like 25 and under crowd, uh, I do think if they can stay together, Tatum and Brown can really, specifically Tatum can really start to kind of get that way. Um, For sure, Luca. it's just, the biggest thing with Luca is like, are they going to get him the support he needs Mm -hmm. for them to really be challenging for a championship? So I would say, those three for sure really kind of stand out as far as um, being like those next generational talents that can compete for multiple championships. Do you think the Luca route could be similar to LeBron in that, like if they don't get him the help and he already signed his first second, his first contract since his rookie deal, right? Like didn't he recently sign for a couple years? His contract extension? I think so. Yeah. So could it be the same route where if he doesn't get the help, he becomes a free agent again, probably around the same time Brown did, like 26, 27, and then he joins up with, like, another star? Do you see that maybe being in his future, or would he not do something like that? I don't I don't see because it's like – so where does he go, though? I have I no idea because we, we don't know what the landscape – With the Lakers or something, you know no, what I mean? No, and we don't know, like, what the landscape of the NBA will be at, right. at that time. But I just I, – I don't think people saw that from LeBron either, but then you get to a point of seven years somewhere and you're like, they're not fucking getting me what I need and I'm here to win. You know what I mean? So right. It's like, but I think what's the difference between LeBron's situation is because Cleveland was a really small market. Right. Right. Dallas, Dallas isn't right. really a small market like that. No. Right? It's kind of like middle road-ish type of market, but mm-hmm. like it has a decent enough market there where Cleveland is not that same. That's why I don't think it was as surprising where – Luca is a little bit different because there is enough of a market still in Dallas. Um, so I, I, it, I think it's, it's a little bit different. Even when Giannis, like if Giannis was leave, that market is so small. Makes I don't sense. think anyone would be, would be surprised by it. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, and Giannis already has his ring, so I don't think he owes them really anything. I don't think they could be mad at him if he decided to leave. Um, yeah. Some of those younger players, though, I just look at their situation. It's surprising that I look at, like Ja and Luca, and I'm more concerned for Luca as far as like team success. Like it just seems like for some reason the Grizzlies are actually building something there, like chemistry wise and culture wise. It's like really good, like a gritty, hard defensive team that can knock down threes, make big plays. I just like I don't know. I feel like when I watch the the Mavericks, they they go as Luca goes. Like if he's not going, yeah. like they're not doing yeah. anything. You know, mm-hmm. so we and saw Ja go out, and they still won all those games without right. him last year. Yeah, because you know? they they got a team. Yeah. They have a team, and I think well, well, it, what we even, even when when Luca went out, Dallas was winning games. Remember, they were winning playoff they were. games without Luca. They were, but yeah. they let Jalen Brunson go. Yeah, right. Um, so I think, like you said, it's just they're so really connected into what Luca can do and provide mm-hmm. that it's going to it, it'd be really interested to see how that team kind of want rounds itself um, and, and what they can become. And then we got to keep in mind, they don't have to, they got people coming back to like Tim Hardaway Jr. is coming back. Oh yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah. Like he's going to be healthy this year. So, and we got to remember he's a 20 point game scorer in the league. So, um, they should still be good. It's just these other teams that have really, really good players coming back. So right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be yeah. an exciting year, man. There's so much it going is. on, so much moving parts. Like, yeah, like I'm so excited to watch yeah. Cleveland, the Pelicans, 
just all these new young teams that have so much talent and length. And yeah, it's gonna be cool. They're gonna be nice, bro. Yeah. But what about what about Utah, bro? Like, are they just like in full? Like, I mean, they that's such in a spike. full. We want Victor Wabanyana mode. Yeah. That's that's all, that's all they're going for, bro. Between them, the Thunder, the Spurs, yeah. like they're in full blown. Like we're tanking and we're doing whatever we can to get Wabanyana. That right. that's the goal. Right. I, it'd be interesting to see if the Pistons are in that run because I, I mean we're being optimistic, but like you know they didn't win a lot of games last year, so I mean you'd think they'd improve this year, but if they don't, they could be in that lottery running too. So they could, but I, I just think based off of the moves that they've made over the uh, during the summer, um, I don't think that that's their that's not where they're shooting for. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I'm interested to see where it all lands though. Yeah, because he's uh, he's eligible after this year, right? So he'll be in next year's draft. Yeah, so next year's draft is going to be. I just pray well. to God that man stays healthy and just you know continues to like you know that's what's the most exciting thing about sports. You got these young prospects that come up and you're like they could be the next great. Like I would be so disappointed if something happened, man. Like I really hope yeah. you know with his size that he can stay healthy and you know continue to progress and not do dumb shit like our boy Imani Bates, who you know clearly is you know. Things seem like they're falling right for him now, but like we got to fucking, yeah, get our head on yeah. straight. Yeah, yeah, I just need for him for it, just to really focus on on the game, get it and get himself together, so that way he can ball out this season, be a lottery pick, and just get to the league and, and do his thing. Because I, I, I'm like, Imani has a ton of talent. Oh yeah, it is there. Uh, we've seen it. It just needs to come together. Exactly. Right. And yeah. so that way we can forget about all the BS that happened, um, whether that was at Memphis or over the summer. Right. If we can just move on past that. Cause I mean, I, you kind of look at it from like a, even a sense like what happened with LaMelo, right? LaMelo had a lot of shit going on while he was mm-hmm. in high school from playing overseas to playing over in Australia to, you know what I mean? Like just a lot of these things, but he came on the scene and, yeah. and more about, right? right. And so that's why I hope that happens with, uh, with uh, Imani, where he just balls out this year. He'll be with his right draft class, right? So he'll be where he's supposed to be. So he balls out and becomes a lottery pick and he gets in the league and does what everyone anticipated for him to do and be. Then I think everything will be right. Right. Yep. So I'm it's going to be a good it. season, man. It's going to be a good but season. But enough with all this NBA talk. Let's get into it because this weekend was fucking crazy. It was crazy for a lot of reasons, bro. Yeah. Bro. Bro. Crazy. Knockouts. Some big knockouts. God, it was a good week for fights, big man. Knockouts. It was a good week for fights, for it sure. It was, bro. Man. It was. And, and before we get to the knockouts, shout out to Clarissa Shields for going into the knockout artist, like, house and fucking just piecing her up, man. Like, I watched that fight, and I was like, this is insane. Like, I was like, I was worried for her. And she, oh, yeah. Like, she... And she handled her. I mean, it was a good ass fight, though. To be honest, like, it was. It wasn't like it was a good ass fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. She, she, she was. There's a couple of spots where she got into some trouble a little bit, mm-hmm. but she held her own. She held her composure, and yeah. I mean, her hands are so fucking quick. They are, man. She puts combinations together so beautifully. She can move in and out of the pocket so good. Like she just handled man. her business. I mean, like she did what she had to do, man. Like yeah, whew. yeah. She, Legend. she's nice, man. She's nice. Don't even know what's next for her, really. I mean, I don't know if her and, like, Amanda Serrano are, like, in the same weight division because I know, like, she's the one that Jake Paul, you know, promotes that yeah, fought yeah. Katie Taylor. Katie Taylor's really good, too. I don't think those girls are all in the same division. But, like, now we're getting to the point where, you know, women's boxing, there's so little stars that you think that maybe they would do, like, a, you know, try to move up or down to kind of fight some of the yeah, other big names. Because we're seeing happen. this now where these female boxers can sell out huge – you know, stadiums right. and so lead like, a car. Yes, exactly. So let's keep it going, man. I love seeing yeah. it. You know, it's great. It's really yeah, cool. I'm hope I, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind seeing that her and Serrano. Yeah, um, I don't know how well Serrano would do, but yeah, Clarissa is great, man. Fuck yeah, she's awesome. Um, yeah. as far as the other fights, yeah, did you watch? I, I kind of caught him after i watched the wilder fight but i didn't catch the caleb plant fight but it looked like that was pretty competitive up until he uh got that knockout Whew! that was crazy didn't watch the plant i did catch the wilder i just saw that fucking knockout yeah man. good night that yeah. what was that the left 
Yeah, was that, that left, left it was like a left mix between like a hook and uppercut. He kind of threw. And like, yeah, he dropped him, man. That was. There's some guys you watch, right? Like him, where he's more of like a mover and he's a boxer, like that Mayweather mm-hmm. style. And then when they land one like that, you're like, God damn, I didn't know you had that in you, man. Right, like, didn't know sick. he had that in him at all, bro. <laughs> yeah. that, uh, but, I mean, he's a hell of a boxer, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think not to say that he's still not one of the you know better fighters in that weight class. He just ran up into the Canelo that just is at a – he's at an elite – he's an all-time great boxer, right? Exactly. So, I like, the question is, like, who does Plant fight next? Yeah, it's got to be someone in that – I... That's a really good one, man. I don't know. I know um, one of the Charlo brothers and him were kind of, well, I can't even say like when people mouth at each other because that happens so much in boxing and then nothing materializes, you know? So yeah, I, it, it, it's tough. Um, I would like that fight though. If he fought Jamal, that'd be, that'd be pretty entertaining. You think so? Yeah. I was going to mention, would it be one of the Charlo brothers? I mean, yeah. it, it, I would, I think it would make, it would be, it can, they, it could be a pretty good pay-per-view. The thing is that if you're going to make that pay-per-view, then hear me out. They will have to play up the race card to make a sale. Right. And when you say play it up, like they're going to have to do something in the press conferences, you mean? Or like Charlo is going to have to like Charlo is going to have to like do some shit that like Wilder did. Like remember when he was like to this day. Yeah, you know what I mean. Just talking about like the the stuff that black people have gone through and everything like that. Like it's gonna have to. I don't have to say it's gonna get to that extent, but like they're gonna have to play that up around around. Yeah. That, even though it, it it doesn't really fly with Plant because his wife is his his wife is black, so <laughs> yeah. it doesn't play as well. Right. But if, if they want to really sell tickets, I think they would have to play up on that. Yeah, no, I'd agree because both. I mean, Charlo more so, but Plant isn't really a household name other than when he fought Canelo. Um, right. But Plant's, I mean, his resume is amazing. I mean, you know, he was undefeated up until Canelo, gave Canelo a good fight up until that, you know, what, 10th, 11th round? round. Yeah. And then he just beat a really good guy in Darrell, like, convincingly. So, I mean, his resume still looks great. I wouldn't even, you know, if he can rack up a few more wins, you could give him another shot at Canelo down the road, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, yeah, I I don't know. I really like him, though. He's a really good fighter, really technical. Yeah, Yeah. And then I just um, need him to stop talking, asking people like, <laughs> yeah. fighter. like just, how do you like my skills? <laughs> like brush. Shut up. And I was just like, see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny, bro. Yeah, man. But um the wilder thing was interesting because I know it was only three minutes. He knocked him out at the very end of the first round, but did, did you what he was moving a lot different than he I've ever seen him move? I mean, he he was he was boxing which was crazy to me. Yeah. Wilder well, usually stands so flat-footed and so yeah, wide Because he just wants to power up. He just wants to power up. And the knockout wasn't one of his no- – I mean, he just threw a counter right that – I mean, man, yeah, his power is ridiculous. Right across the head, bro. <laughs> that power is something I've never seen, man. I mean, that wasn't even – he didn't put anything behind that it didn't look. I mean, that was crazy. It, was like it just caught him. It's caught the dude so good. But I think – but we've been starting to see that, especially even at that – with that – uh, from the second to even the third fight with uh, with Fury, mm-hmm. like we started to see the transition of him improving his boxing skills, right. right? Especially in that third fight, like you could evidently <clears throat> see that he was working on trying to develop those skills because it was needed for him to be able to even hang. Because if he was just looking for knockouts in that, you know, with uh, Fury, it just correct, he come yeah. to find out like the dude can rise up from the grave, yeah, and and still be ready to go at it. So. It came uh, with his new trainer for sure. I mean, his new trainers really kind of yeah. got him on a new regiment. And I watch him, I forget the guy's name, but on his Instagram, he'll show his pad work and the, the stuff he's got while they're doing. And he's wor- a lot more on footwork combinations. You know what I mean? I think, which is good with him. You got to realize it's like Deontay, your power's there regardless. So like just yeah. doing the same old, like flat footage, looking for the knockout. We need to develop the rest of your skills and you fighting off your back foot and throwing counters you're going to catch people and knock them out regardless. So, right. yeah, it's it's good to see. Right. He looked like a different guy. Granted, I don't know how – Helenius was one of Wilder's old sparring partners. I know he has a pretty good record, and I think he was ranked maybe lower top ten, you know, in a lot of sanctioning bodies. But, like, that wasn't nearly his level of competition. So, it'll be interesting now to see where he goes because he called out Ruiz. Right. He called out Usyk, Joshua. So, yeah, any of those would be yeah. really good. I'd like yeah, to see I wouldn't mind seeing him and Ruiz. Um, 
I mean, him and Joshua, I think, could still be a good fight. That's the one I really want to see. People have just been wanting to see that fight mm -hmm. in general. Um, so I, I definitely still think that it could be a really good fight. But um, I think he I knocks think, Ruiz out within three rounds. I don't think that. Fight really? Could, yeah, I don't think that. I know Ruiz is a really good counter puncher and a good boxer, but I just don't. I've seen Ruiz get caught twice in his last two fights. You know, like I just don't think he gets up if he gets caught by Wilder. You know what I mean? Like it's I mean, that's just, true. Yeah, and them things them, like that thing come from anywhere. Yeah, and he's so much more lengthy. He could just sit on the outside. And, I mean, yeah, I yeah. don't know, bro. I don't think that bodes well for him. But uh, any of those fights would be interesting. Heavyweight division is still very interesting, man. It's it's, it's good to see. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing that. And then, um, who else? Was there another? There was one more. Oh, yeah. Cambosa said date. Hey, hey. Yeah, that happened. Yep. And it it was just like a master class. I yeah, just like, a mis mismatch. Haney is just. He's very good, man. I, I, I had no idea until seeing his last two Cambosa fights. I didn't think he was on that level, but he's great. I mean, like he, and it, it just that. With him, he's so technically sound. Mm -hmm. Like, I, he probably has the best jab. Yes, out of all the lightweights, I totally agree. His his jab is phenomenal. Um, his his presence of where he's at in the ring is so. He just he's there's you know you can be a technical boxer, but he's so calculated. It's like he has a complete game plan of like where he's gonna go. Mm -hmm. you know, and picks mm -hmm. his spots like throughout, you know, I don't know. He, he, he's a very good fucking fighter, man. And yeah. I think him and Loma have to be the next fight like that. that like, you know, and he, he said that that's kind of like, I don't know if he said he promised Loma that fight, but they had talked about it. I think that's gotta be his next fight. Yeah. That would be such a, such a fun fight to watch. And I couldn't even the, say who I think would win. I mean, that would be incredible. The question is, is like, does Loma get a fight in before he fights Haney? Yeah, I don't know. He got that one in recently within the last year, but maybe he'd want to get another one in, like kind of coming up. I'd have to Google. I don't know if he's got anything lined up, but that would be yeah, that'd be awesome. Right, because I know you know he went he went back home to kind of help protect his country and everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think it, it, I think it'd be good for him just to kind of get just get that rhythm back and that feel back. Yeah, um, before I jumping in there because they just kind of jumping right back in at Haney. I think it'd be. Yeah, uh, that'd be a pay per view like spectacular sure. though, man. That would yeah. be insane. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on, bro. I think uh, a lot of rumors that Tank and Ryan Garcia are still trying to fight too. So hopefully that could get materialized. Still waiting on Bud and um, Errol Spence. You know that that seems like it's further away than it was because the report really? a couple of months ago was that they were just dotting some T's and or dotting some I's yeah. and crossing some T's, and now it just seems like. It stalled a little bit. I don't know. So we'll, we'll see. Yes, yeah, were they potentially uh, shooting for like a December? It was originally November. Now they're saying December, January. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, that's the that's the only one that I really like need more than anything. Like I, I will pay whatever that pay-per-view is, man. That will be <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if there's any other fights coming up really other than that. I know Fury's fighting – Fucking Chisora again for the third time, which is not really interesting. Chisora's pretty old and was never really a champion. He was always kind of like a, not a journeyman, but just a contender that never actually kind of broke through. So that fight's not really entertaining to me. Fury can do whatever he wants. I mean, get a warm up yeah. in until Usyk, I guess. But that's what they're what talking about, I'm just looking at this now. It says, so uh, Josh Taylor and Jack uh, Catterall. Oh, Cottrell. Like they're going to yeah. be. Uh, they're going to have a rematch in February. That's good because they fought okay. last time and it was kind of controversial. Taylor didn't kind of yeah. put up the fight that everyone thought he could. So good. I like to hear that. Oh, yeah. I like Taylor a lot. Yeah, man. A lot of good things. And then we got, I think this week is um, fucking, what's his name? Olivera Makachev. So that'll be, that'll be. Oh, huge. yeah. That's yeah. going to be a really, really good. Because Makachev, that's, uh, could be what's his name? Like protege, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited for that, man. I don't think I'm going to be able to catch it because I think it's during the day this Saturday. So, okay. But, yeah, man, that's going to be a great fucking fight. It is. A spectacle. Yeah. As far as uh, NFL, man, this is the weirdest start to an NFL season ever. Like, I'm claiming it, bro. What? 
I mean, the Jets have four wins. The Giants have five wins. Like, Tom Brady's family list. Like, this fucking shit is... <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy, bro. He's losing to shit teams. I mean... Cutting out his fucking line. Yes, dude. Dude, that's why I said that. I saw a uh, picture of him, you know, in this line, and the caption was, I lost my family over this shit. This <laughs> shit. <I'm-> <laughs> oh, it was laughing so hard. <laughs> Bro, like, yeah, this <sighs> NFL season is fucking wild, bro. It is, dude. It, it really is just, it's fucking wild. Just seeing um, the power rankings, you're looking at these teams, like, just the ones that are in it are surprising, but the ones that aren't in it, like the Packers are, like, nowhere to Packers, be seen. Packers, yeah, I mean, the Bucks and stuff like that. It, 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 it's, it's really weird to kind of see it, man. Yeah. And But the thing is, is that even when you look at things like the Rams, the Niners, the Ravens, the Bucks, the Packers, they three and three. Yeah, they they're not. Exactly. It's not like you're like like really out of it. You're just three and like they still like lead the division. Like some like the Bucks, Ravens, like they still lead their division. Right, exactly. It, you know, everyone's kind of still in a lot of those. All the divisions are pretty close for the most part. They so. are. They yeah. are. What do you think was your what was your take on the Chiefs Bills game? Does that make you think like the Bills are far and ahead above them, or is that just something where it's like they're still pretty neck and neck? And it's a toss up. It's for me, it's still pretty neck and neck. Um, to be honest. I mean, now granted the Chiefs kind of gave up a, a lead there that I don't think anybody was well, no, they I'm sure they came back, but um I still think they're neck and neck. All these games, these these games over the last couple of years have been so tight. Right. Right? Where it's literally just who um who has the ball last oftentimes. Mm-hmm. And it just has like that. So I don't think it's a clear indicator of anything. The only thing is that now it just guarantees that if Kansas City um, gets to the playoffs and, and so does the Bills, that it's going to have to go through Buffalo. Right. Like they have to go to Buffalo to win that game to get to the Super Bowl. So um, that's the only thing that it guarantees. And so we know last year it was in Arrowhead. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, things change when you're at home. It'd be interesting, especially in that cold. Right. Well, I mean, if the Chiefs still end up with a better record, it would be in Kansas City, wouldn't it? Yeah. And okay. they end up with a better record. Well, but that's interesting because I didn't know this, and I said it on the broadcast the night. Mahomes has never played an away home or playoff game in his career. No. He's not no, played he an away game. That's crazy. Like That so is crazy. Know. Yeah. It is really crazy. So, to your point, we don't know what that holds. I mean, it's not a – it's not everything, but it's definitely – home field advantage is something. So. Oh, yeah, especially know. in, like – I mean, it's a reason why they call it Bills Mafia. Like, yeah. yeah, man. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm that. And then, like, man, the fucking Giants, bro. Yeah. They look, like, well-coached, man. They just look, like, Green. not sloppy. Yeah. yeah. Like, they don't hurt themselves. And then Saquon, I mean, it's so good to see him just back and balling, bro. Right. He's such like a beast. He's really balling. Making good plays. He slid down and didn't score that touchdown at the end mm-hmm. to seal it. I mean, just playing good team ball. I'm not still – I still don't – the craziest thing about that is, like, their line's holding up. Saquon's balling. But I still just don't have a ton of uh, – Daniel Jones is doing what he needs to do. He's not making stupid po- turnovers. But, like, I just, like – their receiving core is not, not that guy. good. Like, they don't have – He's not the guy. He's no. not the guy. And their receiving like, core is not there either. It's just, like, it's so no. surprising to me they're able well, to they're, put up points. Too. Like they got guys missing, like Galladay, as yeah, you know, Sh- he's Sterling Shepard's gone with the coach, yeah. and then they got uh, Sterling Shepard's out for the season. I yeah, think. So, yeah, yeah. So he's out. So they got like some of their better guys, um, but they may need to look at getting a, a, a quarterback. Yeah, man. And then the Jets, Sauce Gardner, man, that dude is unbelievable, bro. Bryce Hall or Brees Hall, whatever his name is. I mean, he's got the most yards per touch in the league right now. They look good. Man, they do, and then y'all got a counter, y'all got a quarterback controversy in New Orleans. Yeah, not for me, man. Like I'm, you know, and it's not even just like a fuck Jameis thing. It's just like look at the first three games. He they could not move the ball down the field, and then the games that Dalton's been in, they've scored twenty four plus points every game. Like I just feel like yeah. you gotta you gotta Everybody, ride with everybody's that. fucking injured now. Yeah. yeah, Thomas is out, Landry out, Olave's in and out. Yep, like. Yeah, I just get, gotta get healthy. 
Yep, defense is shaky. I, luckily, the Cardinals have been playing bad, so hopefully this is a win. If we can't win this game, I'm like kind of going to wrap it up for the season, I think, but that's kind of kind of yeah. it. But they're only a game out. So Yeah, no, they're not. I mean, y'all not far off. If y'all can just, if that defense can really start clicking, I think that'll really carry y'all uh, a lot of games. Yeah. What do you think about the Ravens signing Deshaun Jackson? I saw that. I don't know. It's just, a, I mean, if he can still play, he can still play. He's got that, you know, vertical threat. It's just, he's so old now. I, I just don't know. Is he going to be, there's no way he's going to be like Eagles Deshaun, but I mean, if he can still get down the field and provide another deep threat option for them, like, I, I don't think that's a bad signing if he's able to be what they're hoping he can be, which is a speedster. Right? I think so. if he can take the, if he can just take the top off for them, Exactly. And just add that element to their game. Yep. Bring the safeties back that, a little bit. Like, yeah. That really opens things up. So, you know, Andrews. And the thing is, is that, like, they're so tied into Mark Andrews and Devin Duvernay that, like, he's going to have some opportunities to go and go get that ball. Yeah. Exactly. Now, we'll say the Ravens got to figure out they fucking fourth quarter issues, bro. They legit could be undefeated right now. Exactly. They've been shooting themselves in the foot in most of the games that they've lost. I totally agree yeah. with you. In that last game, you gotta say it was just on Lamar. Yep. Right, like you, that you you can't be that you can't be that loose with the ball, bro. Yep. Totally with. So you. and he's he, I mean he was missing guys that were just wide open. It just the ball was just a little too much, bro. So hopefully they can get it figured out. I still think that they're gonna end up winning the division, um, but they they gotta they gotta get their they gotta get their things figured out really bad. And then, bro, these Thursday night games. Trash. Have been fucking garbage. <laughs> They've been so bad, bruh. Broncos and country. If I see one That's more, right. oh, bruh. <laughs> if I see one more fucking televised Broncos game, I'm gonna lose my shit. They're so bad on every level, bro. Like they just look like they're coached horrible. Russ looks like a shell of himself. I mean, it's Man, just. Man, I don't know what it is, bro. I don't either. They gave him a lot of money too. They did give him a lot of money. <laughs> not to say that he wasn't deserving of it, but man, I don't know if it's a scheme. Melvin Gordon is not like he just. They just took him out the fucking game. He wasn't playing anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know what it is, bro. But they got to figure it out. I don't know if they will, bro. It looks like a bad year for them. It does. I just like. I don't think they're gonna turn around. But I'm with you. I, I'm never watching a Broncos game for the rest of the season. I can tell you that. <laughs> Let's I, know, I know. I <laughs> know. I know when if the NFL don't start putting on some better fucking games on Thursday, right? They gonna start banning that shit. Yeah, man. Someone put out a tweet about that, just like how much Amazon paid for these Thursday night games, and it's like they and paid they all this money. Fucking terrible. Oh, so bad, bro. So terrible. Bad. Like y'all got to put better matchups on there. Bro. I know, man. Hopefully the and I'm Saints. Assuming can... They probably thought it was. You know what I mean? <laughs> like yep. oh, Broncos and Chargers. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> Material. Been bad. Hopefully the Saints Cardinals game tomorrow night's uh can turn that around, put yeah. some excitement in the scene. I'm gonna be the most obnoxious, drunk, screaming, <laughs> like high fiving people I don't know, like flicking off people that are giving me at it. Like it's gonna Listen, be <laughs> I hope I get on the screen. I do not end up on somebody's Instagram or TikTok feed, you fighting and throwing blows with anybody. <laughs> Just don't no. don't don't end up on <laughs> I don't get like that. I don't want to no. get a. I don't want to get an Instagram I'm like. Look at these two white guys fighting. <laughs> I'm like, he like the Ethan just knocked the fuck out because they don't know that he. Oh is a my boxer god, bro! Life. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I'm not an angry drunk. I don't really get feisty like that. I'll, uh, you know, but I'm gonna be making best friends with any Saints fans that are around me. We're gonna be high fiving during touch, hopefully touchdowns and fucking, you know. I plan on just getting very drunk. That's. That's what I plan on doing. And then even if the season sucks, it would just be so such a good memory for this to be a win for me to go to my first Saints game and they win. Yeah, I'm hoping yeah, manifesting it. Yeah. For sure. Oh, that'll be a move. Real quick. These MLB playoffs is getting real interesting, bro. Bro. Dodgers. I don't think gone. I'm ever yeah. Dodgers are Braves gone. Yep. Like it, it's been crazy, man. It's actually been cool to watch. I've actually been, you know, keeping in tune. Are the Yankees still in it? Yeah, the Yankees right. just secure so they can move on. But I mean, they got a hell of a fucking. They got they going up against the Astros. So Who are the Padres playing. Padres play the Phillies. Okay. 
they won, uh, so it's tied up one one. But like, I don't think anyone, maybe outside of the Astros um, and the Yankees, like especially in the AL in the NLCS, I don't think anyone probably expected those two teams to get there. Right. Yeah, it's been very interesting. Who do you think's gonna take it all right now? And you're just like, is there a team? I mean, you got to go with the Astros, bro. They look good. They're, they're so good. They have talent, and they're coached really well. Yeah. Very disciplined. Yeah. So, I don't know. I have to get my boy on here so we can talk, really talk it as we kind of head to, like, the uh, to the World Series and yes, really talk, chop it up with him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, man. Anything else? Nah, that's it. Next up. All right, man. Uh,